James here, and I'm joined by Josh today to tackle one of the biggest decisions in AI development. Hey everyone. Yeah, we get asked this all the time. When do you stick with one powerful agent? And when do you break things out into a team of specialized agents? Exactly. It's less about which is better and more about choosing the right pattern for your use case. Okay, so let's start with the single agent approach. Why does this work so well? I think single agents are underrated. Look, you have one AI assistant handling everything. Research, analysis, visualizations, writing, no handoffs, no coordination, just one system to manage. Yeah, and when that single agent is designed around a single focused use case, the quality can be excellent. It keeps all of the contacts in one place and debugging can be super straightforward. You know exactly where to look when something goes wrong. For rapid prototyping or targeted workflows, a single agent can absolutely deliver high quality results without the overhead of a multi-agent setup. But the limitation comes when you start to stretch it across too many different domains. That's when the output can start to feel shallow. On the flip side, multi-agent systems let you build a team of specialists. Instead of one generalist, you've got focused roles. Agents that are experts at handling different data sources, agents for code generation, synthesis, planning, and all kinds of stuff. The specialization really shines when you got a broad set of tasks. Each agent goes deeper in its domain, which helps maintain quality across the board. Exactly. It's not that multi-agent is always higher quality, it's that it scales quality across a wider range of tasks. A single agent can still hit a very high bar, but usually only within a narrower scope. The trade-off is complexity, moving parts, handoffs, and monitoring. But if you're building something that spans multiple domains, the benefits could outweigh the overhead. Definitely important to not forget about the overhead. So let's make this practical. When do you reach for a single agent? Simple tasks, rapid prototyping. When you need to maintain deep context in one focused workflow. That's where a single agent shines. I couldn't agree more. And if you're just getting started, it's usually best to start right here. And multi-agent? That's the right move when your use case broadens, when you need specialized expertise across multiple domains, or you're running production workflows where quality across the spectrum really matters. So it's really a spectrum. Start with the simplest setup that works and only add complexity when your use case demands it. You don't have to pick a camp. You can grow from one end of the spectrum to the other as your project evolves or even take different approaches for different use cases. On the technical side, single agents usually mean lower latency and simpler debugging. Multi-agent setups give you modularity. You can mix model sizes, maybe a reasoning model for planning, but a smaller, faster one for specialized tool calls. That can actually be more cost-effective in the long run for complex systems. And it lets you tune each piece really independently. And that flexibility is a big deal in production environments. So here's the bottom line. Single agents are perfect when focus, speed, and simplicity matters. And multi-agent systems really shine when your use case is broader and you need consistent quality across a bunch of different domains. Thanks for watching, builders. What do you think? Are you team single agent or team multi-agent? Let us know in the comments. And if you're already building, drop your experiences in the comments too. We'd love to hear about what worked and what did. Happy, Happy building. building.